out at the Botanic Garden here at OSU to talk about fall armyworm. Uh, this is a caterpillar pest that definitely likes to feed on turf grasses, and you may have noticed these in your lawns this, this summer. Uh, this species uh, is native to North America. It overwinters in the Gulf states. Uh, it uh, reproduces continuously in those areas, and then it migrates on southerly winds uh, in the summertime. And so here in Oklahoma, we don't see these uh, critters arriving until late summer into the early fall, which is why we call them fall armyworm. So how do we identify fall armyworm? Well, these are uh, caterpillars that, uh, they, they kind of have a different appearance, uh, even within the same species. So from one individual to the next, they can range from a, a pinkish coloration to kind of a yellowish, uh, greenish color. Uh, and then they can get very dark into the grays and almost black as well. So they do vary uh, from individual to individual in their appearance. When they're fully grown, they're, they're about, they reach about an inch in length. And one thing they all have in common, despite that difference in coloration, uh, is they all have an inverted Y-shaped uh, marking on their head capsules. So uh, even without magnification on those larger caterpillars, you can see that distinct feature that shows that inverted Y. Uh, the fall armyworm uh, develops through uh, several instars. Those are different growth stages. Uh, and right now we're experiencing this generation and they're, the, the, they're into their late uh, instar and they're just doing some extensive damage as they're, uh, as they're feeding. Of course, as these caterpillars get large, they, they consume more material and it causes more damage to our, our lawns. There's actually two strains, uh, genetically distinct strains of fall armyworm. Uh, there's a corn strain, which prefers corn and other tall grass uh, crops. And then there's the rice strain, which prefers turf grasses. And that's exactly what we're, we're seeing here. So really that strain differentiation is, it comes down to their food preference. Uh, and as I mentioned, they, they do feed on a wide variety of, of plants, but they really do have a preference for turf grasses, in particular Bermuda grass, followed by some of our cool season grasses. Uh, the Bermuda grass that we see here uh, that's uh, behind us is, is heavily infested this year, which may be a common sight uh, throughout lawns and gardens and uh, golf courses and other landscapes throughout Oklahoma this year. Bermuda grass, after it's been fed upon by, uh, by fall armyworm, it, it does have a tendency to recover faster, especially if it's well managed uh, with good watering and good fertilization. Uh, and that's because of the growth habit of Bermuda grass uh, and, and to a certain extent zoysia grasses as well. Our cool season grasses like our fescues uh, and our rye grasses are going to be slower to recover. Um, and in fact, if the infestation is heavy enough, um, the, the caterpillars can actually kill uh, those types of cool season grasses. So the question on everyone's minds is how to get rid of these caterpillars. And the most quick and effective way uh, is to use a properly labeled insecticide that you can find at a garden shop or a box store. Uh, so that's for the homeowner side. So anything that's labeled for caterpillar management on turf grass. Primarily, we're talking about pyrethroid-based insecticides. Uh, the commercial applicator will have uh, more tools at their disposal for, for management. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that um, these critters They'll be around in our lawns until we get our first killing frost. So after that occurs, there's no need to treat anymore. And again, remember that uh, properly managed Bermuda grass can recover from fall armyworm feeding. Now, if you're considering starting a new lawn in a landscape, uh, you can look for certain varieties and cultivars of some of our warm season grasses like Bermuda grass and zoysia grass and even some of our cool season grasses that are genetically resistant to fall armyworms. So there's a lot of research out there that shows uh, this preference or this resistance that's built into some of these different lineages of, of both warm season and, and cool season turf grasses as a management option, a prevention option in the long run uh, for fall armyworm invasions. So just remember, a fall armyworm does not overwinter in Oklahoma. This is a very cold sensitive species and it just cannot survive uh, winters here. Uh, the new invasions that we see every summer into the fall are coming up as adult moths from the uh, southerly states, those Gulf Coast states. So uh, we, management's not necessary after that first killing frost. For more information about fall armyworm or other insects and diseases that might be affecting your landscape, uh, you can look at an important resource that we have at the Department of Entomology and Plant Pathology website called Pest E-Alerts for updated information about 
uh, this and other pests. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussions.